So in this episode of Viral Rewind, we're back on MS-DOS 6.2 here, looking at the stainless steel rat virus. It also goes by SSR or Revenge. And I've got a little bit of a different setup here, and you have to pardon the fan noise. I don't know how much is coming through here because we're using a projector for our monitor this time. So if we look at SSR, you notice that it's a pretty big size file for a virus. It's almost 21 kilobytes in size. And the thing with SSR, it's a fully encrypted DOS virus. And it's got four built-in decryption engines that it makes use of. So, when we run SSR, it tells us details about the GOAT file and the size change in hexadecimal. Because if we look at SSR now, you'll see that the file size has increased. However, even though the file basically infected itself, the file no longer works now. If you try to run this again, it's just going to lock up or do some crazy things. What we need to do is find a file to infect. So in this case, we'll use sys.com, which is 9,432 bytes. If we run sys, we did that. Look at this again, and you can see that it has grown considerably in size now to almost 28 kilobytes. So it's now carrying SSR's viral code, including the decryption engines in it. So let's look at debug. Let me get a little thing out here. Now you notice the system has also slowed down a little bit. SSR tends to slow the system down some. So we're going to iterate through the memory addresses here. And one of the unique things with SSR is that it hides itself in memory. See all this? That's all the encrypted portions of SSR being stored in memory that they don't want to see it. So I'm going to just iterate through this real quick. As you can see, there's quite a bit of memory used up by it. And you see Random Encryption Synthesizer, or Synthesator, that's one of the names given to one of the decryption engines that SSR has. Let's look some more. The Stainless Steel Rat Mutation Engine, the second name for another one of the decryption engines that SSR has got. And the Metamorphic Mutation Engine version 2, including the supposed copyright by Stainless Steel Rad 1996 and 97, its coolest engine. The third name for the third decryption engine in there. Don't know about the fourth one, but you got the three there. After that, not too much to look at. So that gives us some insight into SSR. So let's start looking at the payloads, and SSR's got a couple of unique payloads. Uh, so the first one we're going to look at involves if you've got something like AIDS test or anything like that on your computer that looks for a particular file name that has the word AIDS or AIDS or anything like that in it. And what I've done bring it up here, is I've taken format.com and simply renamed it as AIDS test. So again, we've got SSR loaded through the system command there. If I try to run AIDS test, we get this printout. Now it's supposed to be in the Russian Cyrillic characters, but it doesn't have that, so it's kind of just spitting out characters there. However, in translated, it reads, it isn't time for Mr. Lazinski to retire. Basically, it's referring to supposedly the author of AIDS test. And once it displays this, the system is hung up, you can't do anything. And the only thing you can do is restart, so let's restart. With a hard reset. So we've restarted here, and the second payload we're going to look at has to do with SSR, working as kind of an antivirus or anti-antivirus. When SSR is loaded into memory on the infected system, what it also looks out for is any other viruses that are trying to execute on the infected machine. Some of the ones that it looks for, for example, is the one-half boot sector virus, or 
the Jerusalem virus. Those are two examples it looks for, which are viruses we haven't looked at yet on this channel, but we'll do so in the future. But anyway, we have the Sunday variant of Jerusalem on this system. I'm going to load up SSR through our infected sys command. And again, because of all those decryption engines and everything in SSR, it takes a while for these executions to take place when it runs. So let it wait for it to get loaded here. And again, this is the thing about SSR. It's a noticeable slowdown. You'll know that something's wrong with your system when SSR is affecting it. So we've got SSR loaded up. Let's try to execute the Sunday variant of Jerusalem. And we get this alarm. It says, alarm warning, danger approaching. Hacker, fucker, TSR shit, or any virus detected. Anyone who wants to fuck revenge is, and I believe it's, pro it's probably supposed to say, naive man. I really the type was there. The best wishes and thanks to dialogue screen. Emulation engine will have problems with this zone. In future versions, we will add protected mode decryptor, VMME. Some kind of thing there for a table hacker tracker, destructive payloads with destroy files, disk CMOS printer, CD ROMs, and then a disk encryption, and other bugs, glucks, and shits. This is only begin. When 95 and her lamers must die, searching, seek, and destroy. There can be only one. And again, as you can see, it's going cycling through this red gradient and I don't know if you can hear it over the fans there's this little alarm sound playing over the internal speaker so this is SSR's kind of antivirus anti-antivirus payload that again checks for certain viruses and it hangs up the system so we have to use control alt delete and we'll look at the third payload so here we are back at DOS again and for the third and fourth payloads, it's kind of going to be a waiting game because the first payload we're going to look at here involves distorting the screen, kind of making it shake or go through lines or making it wobble, all dependent on the processor speed of the infected machine. So then we go to temp, load up sys, and then we have to wait about 23 minutes to see this payload take place. So after we get our response back here at the command line, we'll set a timer for 23 minutes and we'll come back and look and see when it's done. And we'll come back in 23 minutes. So here we are with the third payload. I must apologize, I had to bring out the IBM CRT monitor that I've used before because the projector doesn't seem to be able to display the payload and I guess the LCD monitor can't either probably because the way that it's messing with the display probably involves changing around certain display attributes like the resolution refresh things like that to give you this screwy display now DOS still works you can of course you can see we can kind of interrupt it a little bit with a directory listing but as you see it's, it really is just messing with the screen pretty badly now on a slower 386 processor this is a 486 it kind of wobbles the screen here it's just really making it messy as you see we're kind of slowing the system down because I'm trying to bring up the MS-DOS editor And you can see it's just absolutely crazy there. Again, DOS still works, but then you're stuck with this. So, that's pretty much what SSR's third payload does here after 23 minutes of activity since first running an infected file. So let's look at the fourth and final payload I show here, and we'll be able to go back to the projector for this one. And here, after resetting, we have the last payload of SSR, and again, this is also going to involve waiting, but this time we only have to wait 15 minutes. 
so that we load up SSR again and then we'll wait 15 minutes and we'll look at the fourth payload. And we'll come back in 15 minutes. So it's been about 15 minutes, so we can go ahead and look at the fourth payload of SSR here. Now, you notice that I've adjusted the projector screen over some, and you'll see that the reason for that in a minute or two. But I'm going to run a test batch file here. And what it's going to do is it's going to run that infected system command program over and over. Because what SSR does is when you first run it, it sets a counter. And when that counter reaches 50, we'll get a nice graphical payload. So it's monitoring how many iterations of a file is run after that 15 minute period. And if it reaches 50, we'll get a nice little graphical payload there from SSR. But you have to do this before the 23 minutes elapse. Otherwise, we go back to that whole screen shaking distortion payload that I showed earlier. Now, because SSR has kind of slowed the system down a ways, it may take a while. So when we get to that graphical payload, I'll point it out. So here we are. Just this. So here's our fourth and final payload from SSR Stainless Steel Rat. It says, This is Revenge of Stainless Steel Rat. And we kind of hang the computer up, and I can see I can stop the colors there a little bit. But you get this nice little graphical payload with revenge flashing. It actually looks kind of neat on the projection here. And it will stay like this until you press the escape key. And it says Revenge Virus version 1.01 .01, released at, let's see, before April 20th, 1996. Copyright, again, Virus Health is trying to put copyright on these. 1996-97, Two Rats Technosoft, written by Stainless Steel Rat. And now the system is officially hung up. We can't do anything. No keyboard input, nothing like that. And supposedly it formats a random sector of the hard disk when you get this.